this is Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. Today I am going to talk to you about how you determine how much of this lovely yarn you have if you didn't count the loops on your Nitty Naughty, which I am notoriously bad at. You know, I lose track, I can't focus long enough, whatever. I, I just don't like doing it. Um, so the two things that I use predominantly are the uh, this uh, EEW yarn counter. Uh, this is um, the uh, Dreaming Robots uh, website. They do the uh, 3D printed um, spinners, the Nano and the uh, EEW 6.0, which I just got at Sheep and Wool uh, in May, uh, which I love and will be seeing soon to do a three ply. Uh, but uh, he also made this nifty little thing and um, it's pretty accurate. So uh, typically uh, the other reason I do this is because I don't, I store all my yarn like this. Um, when I create a yarn, so here's the kiviet that we did a few weeks back. Uh, I store all of my skeins in a sealed plastic tub like this. Uh, and I label it. Uh, and typically I don't put the yardage on it. I'll just put the ounces and um, the uh, WPI and the fiber and how I spun it. Uh, and um, when I wind it, I will usually run it through my yarn counter. Now that's great if you are pretty darn sure that you have enough yarn for your project. Now say I spun all this wonderful yarn or say I'm going to spin for a sweater and I don't know how much yarn I'm going to need. Uh, you can spin up a little sample. Um, this is a cowl. Uh, these three I have out because I'm gonna wind these because I'm gonna knit something with them immediately. This is number one up to do. Uh, this is that purple bat that we did, that the purple smooth bat during TDF. It's a, a progressive colorway. And it is the one that has my hand processed alpaca in it and merino and that yellow um, uh, airy piece silk. I want to know if I have enough to do a particular pattern. I did not count my loops on my nitty knotty because, you know, that's the way I roll. Uh, so there are two ways to do this. One is I uh, just wind it through my yarn counter and see. <laughs> uh, the other, before I wind it and then realize I can't use it for that project, uh, is um, to uh, do something uh, called calculating grist. Uh, and I did go through that in great detail uh, uh, when the um, I did the video spinning a self-striping yarn and it had the alpaca uh, and I went into it in great detail and everybody's eyes glazed over and said, oh no, math. Um, but math is kind of important. I have a easier way for y'all. The minimal amount that you need to know about grist is that grist is yards per pound of a fiber. So if I have a pound of this and I know how many yards it is, then no matter what amount of this I have, I can tell you how many yards I can throw. I say, oh, well, if one pound of this is 5,000 yards, wait, let's make the math easier. If one pound of this is 100 yards and uh, I put this on the scale and I have, uh, eight ounces. So that's a half a pound. Uh, that would be uh, 50 yards. Um, so takes the math down to super basic. Uh, so basically this little magical device here is a shortcut to skip almost all the math. Uh, this is called a McMorrin yarn balance. Um, some of them call them a yarn scale. Uh, and I, uh, you can make these yourself. Um, I did some research on it and decided, nah, I didn't want to spend my time doing that. Um, so I purchased this one to show you guys. Uh, I um, looked at a lot of different websites and they're all basically the same and they all price between 38 and 42 dollars from what I saw online. Uh, so you take this little box and you set it on the edge of the table and this is the balance and there is a notch at one end. The V goes in V shape, so it'll be in your balance like this. And then what you do is you hang your yarn over the side, and I'll show you how to do this. And you want this to just balance. So when this balances level with your piece of string, your piece of yarn on it, then you take that piece and you measure it on your ruler 
and then you take the number of inches and then you multiply that by 100 and that will give you the number of yards per pound that you have. And then you uh, have to weigh your skein and then from there you know um, how many yards you have. So really easy math. So what I've done is I just put my yarn on my Swift and I am going to uh, just cut this uh, tie that I have on here. And then I'm going to just cut a small length of yarn. Uh, now, if you have a heavier yarn and you know how much, I mean, it's like dense, this is very, very lightweight yarn. Um, so I'm probably gonna need a slightly longer piece. Um, I may actually need to, uh, this may not be long enough. So I'm just going to take a piece. Oh, let's see here, I'm gonna guesstimate. Oh, actually maybe it's heavier than I thought, okay. So let's take and see if this much will do it. So, so I've checked to make sure that my uh, spindles here, that my um, arm of the uh, balance is in between uh, the center of the slot here. And I put my yarn loop side in that notch on the balance. And then I start trimming off a little bit here and there. And you wanna to try to trim the two ends the same. And it's not gonna take um, a big dramatic change. So you wanna be careful when you're nipping off the ends here. Ooh. The first time I did it, I was a little overly aggressive with the nipping. <laughs> the other thing that I wanna always make sure of is that this, this is in the center. Okay. And you should try to keep this at the edge just so that the yarn uh, isn't resting on the table, giving you a, a false um, weight. Oh, there it goes. You see it move a little bit? Let's see if this is going to be the one. Oh, I went too far. See, I told you you have to use a tiny little bit. So I have cut another piece of yarn. I'm going to try it again here. Hang this on. And of course, it's too heavy. This time, I will be more cautious when I get to that length that's more like it. See now, it's already starting to, to, to lift just a little bit. Oh, it's almost there. <laughs> I'm the least patient person in the world. There we go. And that is balanced. Ta-da! So now, all we have to do is take this over to our ruler. Pardon me, Erlene. And I'm gonna measure the length of this piece. So this is, and you don't wanna stretch the yarn when you're measuring it. So we're just gonna lay it right at that first line and right here. And that is nine inches on the nose. And you wanna be accurate with this because uh, you know it's doing a calculation over a larger amount. So nine inches is the number. The uh, calculation then will be um, nine inches times 100. So there would be 900 yards in a pound of this. Next, I'm going to see how we compare with the yarn counter. So here is the yarn counter. And what you need to do for this is uh, you just turn the power on. Um, it's magnetic too, so if something goes crazy, it, it won't um, pull off the table. It'll, if it gets tangled, it will uh, just pop the uh, case off and it'll stop. Pretty cool. Um, it has uh, a menu here you can choose. So this says yarn WPI 15 is what I had um, the last one set at. Uh, this is not a 15. But for the most part, it's a worsted weight. 
So uh, I'm gonna call that a nine, and let's see what they have on here. So there's pre-designated um, numbers. So I'm gonna go down, so they have 12, eight, six, so I have a nine, so I'm gonna say, uh, I think eight will be too thick. So I'm gonna just leave it at 12. Um, the directions say that you can leave it um, at nothing and it'll still be very accurate. You can just not even put in a WPI. So let's test that theory. <laughs> uh, and then um, go back to the menu and you can select uh, your units. You can do it in yards or meters, I do yards. So now you want to make sure in order for it to be counting, you have to be on this home screen that says EEW yarn counter 0, 0.0 yards. That means it's ready to go. So I am just going to uh, anchor this down to my table. I'm just going to bring this around this yarn counter and all that involves is just wrapping it through this coil and then um, it goes up over the top here. There's a little uh, ridge in this wheel and then I just ring it through like that. I'm gonna bring it over to my uh, yarn baller. And all I did was I brought my yarn over to the yarn baller and put this here, and uh, now we should be in business. And there we go, and I'm just gonna wind. Now I have had some instances where it, it works better if the yarn counter is elevated, but I don't have anything I can anchor it to elevated. I've tried books, but it doesn't stick to a book. You know, I can't really anchor it in. So sometimes when it gets lower, the um, Swift uh, will uh, catch the yarn on the bottom. Uh, let, let's see if I get lucky on this one. So now I'm just gonna wind, and uh, we'll see uh, what my yardage is at the end. And we'll compare it to the yardage from the uh, McMoran yarn balance. And you don't have to do it both of these ways. I just thought um, the uh, yarn balance, uh, the reason that uh, I have the yarn balance is actually I'm planning a sweater project and I want to know how much I have to spin. And that is what really helps me. I do a little uh, sample spin at the weight yarn that I want and then I can um, weigh the uh, piece and then I will know how many yards that I'll get per pound and then based on the pattern how many yards I need and how many pounds I need to spin at that weight to uh, have the amount I need for the sweater. So it's very useful information and that balance is very, very helpful. I'm keeping my eye over here because I'm 99% certain it's going to catch at some point as it gets lower and lower down. <laughs> Maybe I'll get lucky. Are we feeling lucky? And now I have a loose end that's flapping down there. I'm just flirting with disaster. All right. And this says that I have 171 Point 0.1 yards. So we're going to do some uh, basic math. You still got to do some basic math, but it's not terrible math. Uh, so uh, what we do is set up a proportion, um, and we know that we have uh, 900 yards to 16 ounces, which is one pound. And I just converted it to ounces because I only have three ounces of yarn. Oh, my, uh, sorry, my ounce looks big and makes that look like a 30. That's a three. So it would be three ounces of uh, fiber, which is how much my, my uh, skein weighs. Uh, well, now it's a yarn ball, how much my yarn cake weighs. Um, so uh, now you just cross multiply. So you would just have 16 X and then 900 times three is 2,700. And so X, which is the yards that we're looking for, is now 2,700 divided by 16, which I asked um, the device that should not be named in my house for the answer. And <laughs> that is uh, 168.75 yards is how much I have here, according to the yarn balance. And as we've already determined, according to the yarn counter, it is 171.1 yards. That is pretty 
pretty darn close, um, especially since, uh, you know, there's a, a little fiddle factor on the uh, yarn balance as far as trimming. I could have trimmed smaller pieces and I probably could have been more precise, um, but you know what? I'm happy with this. For this project and three ounces of yarn, I, I think it's fine to be within a couple yards. How you can use this to uh, determine how much fiber you need to purchase to spin at a certain weight to do a certain project. And it really matters when you're doing big projects and you want to buy some luxury yarn and make a really great sweater. Well, then you want to know how much yarn you have. Are you going to run out? Do you need to dye more? Do you need to, to spin more? Do you, you know, how much is this going to run me? <laughs> um, and, and that is the value of this. Uh, and I've also demonstrated that my yarn counter is accurate, which I already knew because I had already done a bunch of tests with it. Um, but uh, I think this is wonderful uh, information and it's really important so that you know, it kind of goes towards uh, being able to uh, get the result you want. Nobody likes it when they run out of yarn, uh, especially if it's hand spun because it's difficult to reproduce. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of information. Uh, hopefully I did not overwhelm you too much with math. Hopefully your eyes are not glazing over. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll find this useful in planning your future projects. Don't be afraid to spin for that sweater. I wanted to show you, uh, based on the uh, McMoran yarn balance, what I have done. So I decided to do this project. I uh, knew that I had enough yarn. Uh, I am on the fourth of seven uh, repeats and I'm about halfway around. Here's my marker. So uh, I don't have any uh, concern that I'm not going to finish this. I'm going to have um, the right amount of yarn. Uh, isn't this a cool pattern too? Uh, it's so soft. Uh, I didn't want to uh, do an entire video full of nothing but sciencey, mathy uh, things without any fibery goodness. So here is that soft bat um, with the, um, the hand processed alpaca. And I think that Loretta is going to love this. It, it, I know that it's a good one when I think I wish I could keep it for myself. Uh, so <laughs> um, uh, here it is. Uh, and uh, if I think about it, I will show it when it's totally finished and lightly blocked, but it, it's, it does just a spiral. A repeating uh, swirl pattern uh, cowl and I think that's gonna look really cool you can see the progressive uh, colorway here we started with the darker and then it's starting to get into the lighter purple and then it's gonna fade and at the end here we have the very light purple and uh, the white of the pure alpaca and the yellow silk I think this is gonna be so pretty um, so there you have it functional use of the McMoran yarn balance uh, in uh, making a decision for a project. Uh, so I will uh, see you guys soon. Uh, I do have some upcoming things. Um, number one, Fractal Spin was the winner and I already have, a little sneak peek here, I already have the uh, three plies done and that video is ready. I was gonna try to put it all up at once though. Um, and in between there, I started spinning the collaboration with uh, Kim from Fairly Fiber Fun, where we traded, traded the art bats, and uh, I got really excited and I jumped to that. So I think what's gonna happen is, uh, I'm at the beach this weekend, so uh, next weekend I am going to do the uh, Fairly Fiber Fun, and the weekend after that I will have the fractal up. And, uh, and then I don't know what's gonna happen because I will be in Ireland for two weeks. Maybe I'll do something live from Ireland. That would be super cool. We'll see how it works out. Um, but uh, I will uh, hope you guys all have a great week. And I will uh, see you soon. Until next time, spin happy.